welcome to this uh, lecture on hardware prefetching um, so this lecture will uh, be on a latency hiding technique that tries to improve performance of uh, modern cache hierarchies uh, by prefetching uh, data and instructions uh, before time into the caches so let's have a quick uh, overview of uh, what this technique is and uh, how does it work so let's assume we have one level of uh, cache, only one cache, and uh, there's a processor and uh, memory. And our goal is to hide the latency uh, of DRAM because that is costly. So what we will do is we will have a prefetcher which is sitting beside a particular cache level, um, as you can see here. And this prefetcher will actually uh, probe all the accesses that are going to the caches and then try to learn. Um, the future accesses okay so for example if the processor is sending a request to address x x plus one and x plus two as you can see it's a pretty simple and uh, trivial access pattern that that any prefetcher can uh, predict or speculate about the future so in this case what the prefetcher will do is uh, it will speculate that in future the processor will demand x plus three it will first go and check in the cache uh, if it is already there then there is no need to prefetch but if it is not there uh, the request will go to the dram dram will respond with the data for the address x plus 3 okay so th this was the address this was the data and the ultimate goal is uh, by the time the processor demands for the data which is present at address x plus 3 it will be there in the cache so we will get a hit right so essentially we are converting uh, misses into hits uh, with the help of hardware prefetching. So a 10,000 feet view uh, of prefetching will be, uh, it's a latency hiding technique uh, that uh, fetches data or instruction before the code demands. And uh, why we need it, uh, as we have already discussed, the op chip DRAM latency is uh, pretty costly and the processor should not wait. For, for the DRAM to uh, respond in hundreds of cycles. How does this work? Uh, well, you can assume it, it's just a speculation technique uh, like your branch predictor, but here it, it speculates the future accesses uh, that, that will be generated by uh, a particular application and based on that it uh, fetches the data uh, from DRAM or from the next level before time. So, uh, few knobs of interest whenever we talk about prefetching uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is how many prefetch requests to generate at a given point of time and uh, that is what is known as the prefetch degree so for example if you uh, get an address uh, x okay which is a demand access from the processor and you prefetch only x plus one okay then the degree is one because you are prefetching only one uh, address at a time instead if you just go for let's say two or four then the degree will become two or four right so again it's a trade-off we can't prefetch uh pretty aggressively uh unless we know that whatever we are prefetching is actually correct all the time they are accurate they are kind of useful uh otherwise it will ha it may happen that whatever we are bringing into the cache they, they are actually creating pollution uh, in the cache because caches are of fixed of size uh, and 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 uh, if we bring something that's not useful it will um, kick out something which is already there in the cache uh, eventually causing pollution the other knob is prefetch distance it's also uh, another form of uh, aggressiveness uh, uh, metric that talks about how far ahead uh, uh, from from the demand access we are uh, issuing our prefetch request so to understand that through an example so let's assume that the demand access uh, is actually to an address x and let's say the prefetcher is prefetching address y okay so the gap between y and x is actually the prefetch distance so y can be x plus 4 x plus uh, 8 x plus 16 anything this is just an example so as you can see uh, if i'm saying y is x plus 16 that means i am pretty uh oh, my my prefetch requests are triggered well ahead of time right compared to x plus 4 and x plus 1 will be you know the very next access and it may come anytime so prefetch distance play a big role in, in determining uh, uh, timely prefetching how how uh, 
accurate uh, you can predict and at the same time how timely you can uh, trigger and get the data into the cache. So we'll go through some of the simple uh, trivial prefetchers that are uh, implemented in commercial processor. Uh, one of the uh, simple prefetcher is called the next line prefetcher and the prefetcher doesn't learn anything. So whenever it uh, gets a access or a miss to uh, block address or line address X, it just prefetches the next line, right? Uh, so it will work well if, if your application has good locality and then uh, you're kind of running through a loop, right? But uh, it may not work well all the time. So if you look at next line prefetcher here, yeah, the degree is one because you, you are uh, prefetching only uh, one uh, request at the time. And the distance is always one because that's why it's a next line prefetcher, right? Uh, mostly you will find this kind of prefetchers at the uh, private L1 ICAS and DCAS because they are closer to processor and most likely uh, they will get a uh, high amount of spatial locality. But what about this particular access pattern? Here, we, we are not getting a fixed uh, access pattern. Instead, we, we are getting something like A, X, and Y. They are not related, but after that, we are getting A plus S. And A plus S and A are actually related through, through a stride or, or an offset of S, right? Similarly, if you compare again, uh, A plus S and A plus 2S are separated by 1S. So if you look at it, uh, you can actually easily correlate with some array accesses where it's actually within a loop for a given uh, program counter, let's say for a given load, which is actually inside a loop, and then you are accessing uh, different addresses in the different iterations of the loop, right? So again, this is pretty common because uh, we will, in our programs we get, uh, or we use uh, loops, and then and, and, uh, we use uh, arrays or the vectors. So a prefetcher called uh, IP stride prefetcher is um, pretty common in all the commercial processors. You, you will find it in your Intel machines also. And the idea is pretty simple. What it does is it, it learns the stride for a given IP. Uh, IP is instruction pointer or the program counter. So you store your program counter here, let's say PCX, right? This is the structure or this is the hardware implementation of this uh, prefetcher. So what it does, it uh, stores a particular PC and it stores the previous address. Let's say the previous address was uh, 60, right? Next time when the processor sends a request, it checks for the program counter of that request and extract the current address now. Let, let's say the current address is uh, 80, okay? So then what it does is it does the calculation of stride, which is like 80 minus 60, which is uh, 20, right? So which means it says uh, for program counter PCX, we may get a stride of 20 lines. Okay, so usually uh, you will get uh, the strides CAS aligned, uh, although I'm not showing here CAS aligned, but you will uh, see that we are showing uh, the strides in the form of uh, number of CAS blocks ahead, okay? And similar to your branch predictor, you can have a uh, confidence uh, bit here. Let's say uh, two bit counters. Uh, you start with zero, zero, then then the moment you see the same stride again, you increment that counter to zero, one, then one, zero, and then one, one, like that. Right? And you can you can uh, fix a policy that once I cross the value one, zero, uh, I will start prefetching the next time I see this PC. So the next time the PC comes, the address or the prefetch address will be the current address, let's say the uh, new current address is uh, something like uh, 100 and the stride that we have learned, right? So stride is let's say 20. So we will uh, prefetch address uh, one, um, 120, right? And then if we have a, let's say degree of four, so we'll just continue doing that. 120, 140, 160 and 180, okay? So this is how this, uh, stride prefetcher is implemented uh, you will uh, get an assignment on uh, this particular prefetcher and uh, we will tell you uh, to improve this prefetcher because it's a pretty trivial and uh, easy to understand prefetcher uh, so so go through it uh, in detail so whenever we talk about uh, effectiveness of prefetchers there are a few metrics of interest because it's a speculation technique uh, obviously we need a metric that can determine the accuracy of this prefetcher like how accurately we are speculating about the future accesses. 
and uh, higher the better right uh, so similarly uh, there is another metric called coverage which says what fraction of misses uh, converted into hits right so let's say previously we are getting uh, 50 misses but now we are getting 25 misses right so i have covered 50 percent of the misses so that means again uh, higher the better so uh, ideally uh, we need 100 percent accuracy and 100 percent coverage so 100 percent coverage means uh, the cache is not getting any misses right uh, any demand misses and then uh, you, your prefecture is uh, kind of hiding all the optic mislatency Another subtle metric is uh, known as the timeliness, which uh, tells us how timely our prefetch requests are. So, for example, this is our cache and this is our DRAM. And let's say if I send a request at time t, uh, this is the prefetch request, and I get the response, let's say at time t plus delta. Okay. But within this time interval, if the processor sends uh, the request, let's say uh, this was for address X, we get the data of address X at time T plus delta. But let's say in the meantime, the processor sends uh, the request for address X, then the processor will get a miss here, right? And eventually we will allocate an entry in the MSHR saying we have already initiated a prefetch request, it's on the way, right? But it's still it hasn't reached the cache and that's why there will be some penalty uh, for the processor. The processor has to wait, right? So the goal of the prefetchers should be prefetched well ahead of time so that uh, by the time the processor demands, the data should be there on the cache, right? So that's why this prefetch degree and distance are some of the crucial knobs to play with. So uh, if you want to uh, go for some of the state of the art uh, in hardware prefetching, you can look at uh, uh, this, this idea that we proposed uh, last year. Uh, there is a blog also uh, on it which, which correlates the idea with uh, cricket so uh, go and have a read if you are interested so with that i will stop